If you point a sensitive radio antenna anywhere in the universe, you'll detect a faint signal that you just can't get rid of. It's everywhere. That signal is a relic of the Big Bang, and it's a treasure trove of information about the cosmos. That means that it's definitely something that we need to look into. About 14 billion years ago, the universe began. Space expanded at a furious pace, filled with a fiery maelstrom of energy and evanescent subatomic particles, winking in and out of existence. I've made some videos about the many misconceptions surrounding the Big Bang, and I don't want to repeat any of that here. The links are in the description if you want to learn more. But here, I want to talk not about the theoretical stuff surrounding the moment of creation itself and focus on some hard data that cosmologists use to learn a great deal about the cosmos. So let's skip over the instant at which the universe was created and the inflationary epoch, that is to say the period of superluminal expansion where in a fraction of a second the universe expanded from roughly the size of a hydrogen atom to a sphere about a light year across. And I'll jump over the part where the universe was about three minutes old, where the atomic nuclei and hydrogen and helium of the primordial universe was already locked into place. Those are all interesting, to be sure, but let's start our story when that was all over and done with, and the universe was coasting along, expanding because of the initial boost and slowing under the effect of gravity. What was going on then? Well, the universe was hot, really hot. When hydrogen and helium nuclei were formed, the temperature was about a billion degrees Kelvin, which is way too hot for atoms to exist. Heat and highly energetic photons would knock electrons off of atoms, so the cosmos was simply full of protons, helium nuclei, and electrons running around, never forming any permanent structures. The universe was full of unattached electric charges. The universe glowed, but at those temperatures it glowed at wavelengths invisible to the human eye. Over the millennia, the universe expanded and cooled, eventually cooling enough that it was only white-hot. At about 370,000 years, the cosmos was glowing yellow-white. It was still too hot for atoms to form, and that meant that the universe was opaque. When light was emitted, it immediately encountered an unbound electron and was scattered. You can imagine the universe at that time as a glowing fog that you couldn't see through. Then, at about 380,000 years after the Big Bang, the universe cooled to about 3,000 Kelvin, or about 5,400 degrees Fahrenheit, and everything changed. At that temperature, the universe was cool enough that once electrons encountered a proton, they would be trapped, forming a hydrogen atom. And in that, at that moment, matter became electrically neutral. Without unattached charges, light could travel great distances. Basically, it's like the fog lifted across the cosmos. Way cool. So, at that moment, the light we could see if we were there and we were in a fireproof suit was yellowish-white, although the bulk of the energy was in the infrared with a peak wavelength of about a thousand nanometers. Then what happened? Well, from that moment, 380,000 years after the Big Bang until now, 14 billion years after the universe began, the universe has expanded a little over a thousand times bigger than it was. That expansion stretched the wavelength of the early light to about a millimeter in length. That corresponds to microwaves. Okay, everything I've said so far is theoretical, or at least it's not something that anyone was there to see. What do we see now? Well, in 1948, Ralph Alpha and Robert Herman predicted that we should be able to detect the primordial fireball in microwaves. You can see those two guys here with Alpha's thesis advisor, George Gamow, coming out of the bottle. Gamow was a real character, but that's a story for another time. Researchers thought for a couple decades about how they might detect this microwave background and, in the 1960s, a group at Princeton led by Robert Dick decided to search for it. However, despite their lofty plans, fate intervened. About 30 miles east of Princeton lays the town of Halmdale, New Jersey, home of Bell Laboratory, where Arno Penzias and Robert Wilson worked. They were using a radio telescope to try to get a precise measurement of a supernova remnant in the constellation Cassiopeia. 
To make sure their measurement had no unwanted signal, they pointed their telescope at empty space expecting to detect nothing, but they heard an unexpected hiss in their detector. After tons of debugging, cleaning pigeons out of their antenna, and checking everything they could think of, the hiss was still there. Furthermore, the hiss was the same no matter where they pointed their antenna. After a lot of consultation with their colleagues, including Robert Dick at Princeton, they realized that they had detected the microwave signal of the Big Bang. It's now called the Cosmic Microwave Background, or CMB. The CMB isn't just one wavelength, it's a spectrum of wavelengths, and the spectrum is exactly what would be emitted by an object with a temperature of 2.7 degrees Kelvin, or minus 450 degrees below zero Fahrenheit. Actually, the temperature is very precisely known. It is 2.72548 with an uncertainty of 0.00057 Kelvin. And it's the same everywhere in all directions. The Earth is embedded in the remnant fireball of the Big Bang, which is an awesome thing when you think about it. This observation is a huge validation of the theory of the Big Bang and netted Penzias and Wilson the 1978 Nobel Prize in Physics. I said that the temperature of the universe is remarkably uniform, and it's true. However, there are tiny variations, and I mean tiny, just one part in a hundred thousand, and those variations yield a ton of information about the universe. We first observed these variations back in 1998, although we've measured them far more precisely in the intervening two decades. Those tiny temperature variations are simply a treasure trove of information, and in the next video, I'm going to tell you all about them. Be sure to watch that one too. Okay, that was fun. It's interesting to learn about the early moments of the universe. 